there's one way of looking at struggling with uh, eating choices that is to look at it through the lens, uh, through a classical lens of addiction. And uh, if you were to look through it through the cl a classical uh, lens of addiction, then the notion would be that one little mistake is just a catastrophe. And the, the thing about that is that there, uh, that would be an improper way of looking at the problem. In other words, you're, you can you could say that there are similarities because we know that there are. So uh, if you process food is going to be uh, very stimulating of dopamine production. Uh, so the more pleasurable it is, the more dopamine, et cetera. And, and that is the same thing as what's going on with cocaine. Um, but that doesn't mean that cocaine and, and you know, a piece of toast with butter on it is the same thing. It's not even remotely the same thing. So the fact that uh, you know when you eat food, you can get a dopamine rush. You're supposed to have a dopamine rush, for goodness sakes. Okay. So you know, the only question is sort of how much, and and if it's exaggerated too much, does this draw you into an addictive-like process? Well, I think that we know that it sort of can, but it won't necessarily in the sense that of all the people for the last 30 years that I've coached in and around the McDougall program, the vast majority of the people that have ever gotten any benefit from this have not, have not been perfectionists at all. Uh, so we, I see it with my own eyes that a great many people will come in 50 pounds overweight and a year later they're 30 pounds overweight or 20 pounds overweight. In other words, they have not done everything perfectly and they have not lost all their excess weight, but they have made substantial progress. And, uh, and so that, that is very typical. So the looking at this as an all or none issue is uh, it's an interesting lens to do it. And there is value in going very clean for a period of time, uh, you know, as you're doing here for a few weeks, uh, something like this, there's value in that in the sense that sometimes it's a tremendous educational process to find out that your palate actually has within it the capacity to find really healthy food, very satisfying, just as it is found in nature. So that's a, you know, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, they've never experienced it. It's like never having been on a roller coaster. You know, you, you don't know what it's like and you don't know what it's like to actually have a clean palate. So uh, it isn't that it isn't worth doing, it could be worth doing for a lot of reasons, but it's not worth doing for the notion that this is the first day that I burned the boats and I'm never going back. And the only way for me to succeed and go forward is to be perfect for the rest of my life. That, that is a ludicrous notion. And um, it, it's one that we should be fully aware that the bar is, is too high unless we choose to make it the bar. If you choose to make it the bar, great. But if you do, you are not one of the rare ones that will succeed. Uh, most people that will have substantial success will not put the bar that high. So that's, that's how I look at that.